Orlando is one of the entertainment capitals of the world. Not just because of its theme parks, but its plentiful sports venues as well. So here are the stadiums and arenas of Orlando, Florida. Fresh off a reputation damaging social media trend, the boys at Kia decided to buy up the naming rights to what was previously known as Amway Center. It's home to the magic of the NBA, the Predators, an indoor football team, and the Solar Bears, a minor league hockey team with the best logo in the world. In fact, let's get rid of the other two. This is the Solar Bears house. Yeah, it's my house. That's one cool bear. But in actuality, it was built for the magic, and they are the only team that's been here from the start. Let's bring them back in. The predators can stay outside. This is a very technologically advanced venue, in particular the extensive video board coverage. This centre hung video board is actually one of the tallest in the world. It's approximately 7 Kias tall, and it probably weighs upwards of 12 Kias. To be clear, I'm talking metric Kias there. Inter and Co Stadium is home to Orlando City and Orlando Pride a women's soccer team. I'm required by Florida law to specify that this pride refers to a pride of lions, not... you know. This is a lovely ground, but it does have one peculiar design feature or flaw, and that is that the roof doesn't cover the corner seating. But I do feel silly pointing that out given that the two biggest stadiums in this city don't have any roof coverage at all. Nowadays, plenty of MLS stadiums have a safe standing section, reserved for the most raucous supporters, and those with restless leg syndrome. But this section, known as the Wall, was the first in the country. It's a trendsetter. Restless leg syndrome, by the way, is very pervasive in Orlando because it's spread by mosquitoes. And there are a lot of lakes in this city which act as a breeding ground for mosquitoes that carry the disease. But I'm not, I'm, I'm not a doctor. Osceola County Stadium. Uh, this was originally built as the spring training home of the Houston Astros. They stayed here for 31 years. But it has now joined a handful of ballparks around the country in becoming a soccer stadium. The venue was renovated as part of a greater project that became Orlando City's training complex. The reserve team plays here now. Baseball fans needn't worry though because the sport hasn't been completely eradicated from the area, there is another significant ballpark that we'll be talking about soon. Like many Florida ballparks, or stadiums that were initially built as ballparks, this has a rather nice exterior with a bit of a Spanish flair to it, which suits a soccer stadium as well, I guess. Nearby is Silver Spurs Arena, which has a similar exterior aesthetic. It's named Silver Spurs Arena because it hosts the annual Silver Spurs Rodeo. It replaced the Silver Spurs Grandstand, which was an outdoor venue. They are not the only tenant though. Orlando Magic's G League affiliate moved in last year. They also changed their name from Lakeland Magic to Osceola Magic in the process. As is usually the case with these rodeo venues, it has an elongated arena floor, which isn't perfect for basketball, but you know, horses and cows have a larger turning circle than the average basketball player. So they need the extra space. Oh, and don't worry, they clean the place thoroughly, so when it comes time for basketball, it doesn't smell like a barn in here. I... I assume. The stadium at ESPN Wide World of Sports. ESPN Wide World of Sports is a complex located at the Walt Disney World Resort. It's located right near the park where you can pay a lot of money to wait in line. Line World they call it, not to be confused with the British equivalent, Q-Land. In case you're wondering, I didn't rip off the name Wide World of Sports from ESPN or ABC or whatever. I copied it off of Australia's Channel 9 which in turn copied it from ESPN or ABC or whatever. Nine's wide world There's a big difference. 
This place was not built for any specific tenant, it's had many. However, the Atlanta Braves had their spring training here since it opened until 2019, along with one of their rookie level affiliates. Since I mentioned the exterior of the previous ballpark, well, the previous Lee ballpark, this one has a facade of yellow stucco. It certainly stands out. Nearby is State Farm Fieldhouse. Those who follow the NBA during the height of COVID will be familiar with this place. It, as well as another couple of venues at the complex, hosted those bubble games. Design-wise, it's nothing too far out of the ordinary. The seating is comprised of a mix of fixed and retractable seating. I appreciate the skylights or pseudo skylights up top. Interestingly, back in the day, this place was known as the Milk House, which is a little strange. But it was simply because it was sponsored by the California Milk Processor Board. But that's also strange in itself because we're in Florida. Advent Health Arena is a much newer and bigger arena at the same complex. The exterior conforms to the same aesthetic as the other buildings here. The interior layout is a little unconventional. The lack of rectangularity suggests that it was designed to host shows first and foremost. You know, stuff like Cirque du Soleil and uh, that ice skating thing with the animated characters and that. Is it... what's it called again? Is it Nickelodeon on ice? No, I don't think Spongebob has the knees for ice skating. Anyway, it'll come to me. It's like a big entertainment company. They own Disney World. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, that layout doesn't stop it from hosting sports like basketball. Obviously. Camping World Stadium. This stadium was built amidst the Great Depression, although little, if anything, remains from those days. New upper decks were added in 1989, and they were the only thing remaining after a more recent renovation was completed in 2014. Still, to this day, the upper decks are the only sections with bench seating. In all those years, it has hosted more than a dozen teams. Only the UCF Knights lasted more than a decade. But they have their own stadium now, we'll get to that one in a moment. It also hosted matches at the 1994 FIFA World Cup, and has hosted the Citrus Bowl since 1947. It also hosts a sacred event known as the Pop-Tarts Bowl. However, as big as the Pop-Tarts Bowl is, it's not enough to pay the stadium's bills for the entire year. So it often hosts motorsports like monster trucks and supercross to fill up the calendar, as you can see. So it's certainly a versatile venue. FBC Mortgage Stadium. Jeez, that is one boring name. I'm just going to call it by its informal title, The Bounce House. Let's put that title card back up. There we go. It gets that name because in the early days the stadium would shake about considerably when the crowd were jumping, but some structural alterations have since been made to lessen that effect. Here you can see the original design. After moving out of Camping World Stadium, the UCF Knights moved into this on-campus home in 2007. Plenty, if not most, college football stadiums have a brick facade. This does too, although it's a little different. Firstly, there's a whole lot more steel on display, and it's segmented, which I suppose would help with ventilation. You know, for the concourses. More so than the seating bowl itself, which is completely open. I'm sure that added ventilation is a welcome feature in Florida. Addition Financial Arena was built at the same time as the football stadium, as part of a greater complex known as Knights Plaza. It was built right next to its predecessor, which was attacked by bulldozers in broad daylight. Despite evidence of the perpetrators being abundant, no arrests have been made. A lot of Florida sports venues have numerous palm trees out front, as does this one. But there are also plenty on the inside, albeit ones that were probably made in a factory in Guangdong. They are there to distract the opposition taking free throws. Those in the student section wave around these palm fronds. It is actually quite effective, that's why they say fear the frond. 
But personally, I think it has very little to do with the visual distraction of the palm fronds in your sightline. It's more to do with the fact that the person taking the free throw is thinking to themselves, Hmm, I never knew they were called fronds. Whoopsie doo. And those were the stadiums of Orlando and friends. My favourite of the lot is probably Inter and Co Stadium, despite the slightly cumbersome name. It just seems to be better equipped than the other outdoor stadiums. And Kia Center is aiding and abetting predators, which is not okay. Consider subscribing if you want to. And as always, thanks for watching, have a good one.